Over the next couple of months, I wanted to focus on Isla whiskeys, so I figured I would start off with Kilholman. They are Isla's farm distillery, so let's get into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about Kilhoman's Macker Bay. Now, this is an interesting whiskey, and we'll get into it in a second. But before I do, even if you're one of those people who does not typically comment on a video, I would really like it if you would tell me what is your favorite Isla distillery, because I'm going to be doing several of these over the next couple of months, and I'd like to be able to organize it in a way that will be interesting to you. So let me know below. As far as Kilhoman the distillery goes, they opened their doors in 2005. They didn't really produce anything in about about 2009, but 2005 made them the first new distillery in 124 years. Previous to that, it was Brooklady and Bunaven in 1881, which is kind of crazy, two in the same year. Uh, but either way, that's a, a very long time and kind of an interesting thing. Now, they also really embraced their heritage and kind of the old style of doing things. And they refer to themselves as Isla's Farm Distillery. And the reason they do that is they have this little term, they say uh, barley to bottle. They really focus on each and every part, and they do, in fact, do every single part. Now, they do import some barley, and I'll talk about that shortly, but they make a ton of barley as well. They grow a whole bunch, you know, from spring to September, and then they harvest tons and tons and tons of it, and they put it on their own malting floor. Not every, sing not every single uh, distillery in Scotland has a malting floor. So it's important to know that they are really embracing that old school style of putting a whole bunch of malt on the floor, allowing it to germinate, and then turning it by hand with shovels, which is just not something that scales. And that's why a lot of other Scottish distilleries do not do their own malting floors. They get something from, say, Port Ellen, right, which actually is quite close to this place and is where they get quite a bit of their malt, just not all of it. So after that, they actually dry out all that malt on their floor using peat smoke from the nearby ocean. It's kind of these ocean soaked bogs and they get all the peat from there and then they dry out all of the germinating barley. And that essentially kills the seeds, but it more so it just dries them out and stops them from germinating at just the right time where the barley has been converted uh, from you know carbohydrates into sugars. And that's important because sugar makes alcohol, right? Enough about the science lesson. So after that, they go through all of the other steps it takes to make whiskey, which we can go into in another video. I'd certainly love to. And then we've got Kilhoman bottling their own stuff. So I think this is a really interesting thing, and I love the fact that they do this. There's loads of different expressions from Kilhoman, and I won't take the time to go into all of them here, but I will go over the core range real quick. So they do have the Macro Bay, which is the one we're talking about here, and it's 90% X bourbon barrels, and the bourbon barrels are actually from Buffalo Trace Distillery. It also has 10% X sherry barrels, and this is from Bodega Miguel Martin from Spain. Now, they also have the Seneg, which is kind of the opposite. It's 90% sherry and 10% uh, Buffalo Trace X bourbon barrels. Then they have the Loch Gorm. Now, this is 100% sherry, and it's a limited release that they do every year. Lastly, they have the 100% Isla. Now, this is the one I was talking about where they actually do take all of their own stuff, all their own grain, all of their own maltings, all of their own everything, put it in a bottle, and that's a yearly expression that they release. So if you happen to see one of those on the shelf, I've never tried it, but I would bet that it'd be worth picking up. So let's talk specifically about the Macker Bay and some of the details here. Originally, it was released in 2012. It's named after a beach by the same name that's located pretty close to the distillery. As I mentioned, it's matured in 90% X bourbon barrel, 10% X sherry butts. It's non-shell filtered. It has natural color. It's no age statement. It's bottled at 46% ABV, and its MSRP is just about $60 at $59. Let's get into the nosing and the tasting because this is always one of the most fun parts. But while I'm pouring, why don't you let me know what is, uh, geez, I'm asking a lot from you guys this time. What is your favorite Kilhoman expression? Because like I said, there's a lot of them and I'm curious what I might've missed out on. A lot of people have told me I need to try the Loch Gorm. So I'm curious to know if there's a lot of agreement in the video here. All right, so as you can see, the color is quite light. This is X bourbon and it is X Oloroso, but it does not say specifically it's first fill or anything like that. But this is also a no age statement. My actually, I shouldn't say limited research. My decent amount of research tells me that this is probably about five years old. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, 
Hearing that this is about 15 to 20 ppm, I'm, uh, I'm going to give you a guess as to what the first nose scent that you're going to pick up is. That's right, lemon. <laughs> no, you're going to be getting some smoke, right? It, just a bit. And it's not super heavy. It's there and it's enough to let you know what it is. And it's enjoyable. It's not heavy, super heavy, but it's it's actually it's kind of getting me ready to drink this. <laughs> so smoke is the first thing. And I kind of was half joking. Lemon is definitely right there. Brininess, like a salt water, is definitely there as well. If you dig a little deeper, you get kind of like a really weak oak in there. But I would say that's more represented by, say, a vanilla flavor. Um, let's see what else. There's definitely more to this. I hesitate to say apple, but it is coming to mind. Um, maybe I'm going to just give it a little bit more of a general fruitiness, but it's, it's very limited. It's, it's deep down in there. You're mostly getting smoke out of this and lemon, lemon smoke. That sounds good. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Now I kind of want to make a cocktail and do the whole like thing where you express the oil from like a lemon peel and, and light it and see what it smells like. Cause I I'm thinking now about lemon smoke. All right. So as far as the taste goes here, this has an interesting mouthfeel to it. It's 46%. And so it does have enough body to be substantial, which is great. This is fully coating my mouth. My mouth now tastes like, <laughs> like ash, but it's delicious ash, you know, in a good way. Right. Um, it does taste, I think I'm going to need a couple of sips before I get really much more nuance. That first sip is never going to be everything. You you want to move past that. Okay, so the lemon is coming out in the flavor for sure. There's um, a honey flavor in there as well. Brininess is huge. This basically just actually, even as I'm talking, it tastes like I ate some like potato chips, almost like some salty potato chips where my my tongue and like my mouth is starting to salivate. Like I'm I feel like I'm tasting smoke and my mouth is ready for more. <laughs> it's it's really actually quite nice. Now, here's an interesting thing towards the finish, if I actually stop sipping long enough to let the finish come through. But in my previous notes, as well as now, there's there's a flavor where I thought I was getting a little like crazy at first. So I did actually go look up a couple of other reviews and one person um, I wish I could remember. I'll actually I'll put the website down at the bottom here. Um, he said that he thought this tasted like eucalyptus and I liked that. I thought that was kind of nice. And I started thinking, I'm like, you know, I can picture that. But what exactly like how would you define eucalyptus? So I looked it up and uh, just general description of eucalyptus is piney salt and uh, like, what's the word, um, menthol or uh, something like that. So basically, it's like a cooling, salty, piney taste. And that just nailed it. Um, so whoever you were, awesome note, awesome note. It's perfect. Um, smoke, it's like a pine forest, a pine forest fire <laughs> with some lemons thrown at it. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and give you my overall here because I'm sitting here and I'm enjoying this and maybe it's because it's, you know, nighttime and I, I've had a you know long work day. I'm just enjoying a whiskey and filming it. But my overall impression of this is that it's good, but I want it to be more. It's a great entry into Kilhoman. And from what I understand, I have not had it. The cask strength version of this is fantastic and only about $10 more as well. I believe it's actually not super hard to find. So my my overall on this is that if you get your hands on it, you are probably going to enjoy it. But it is very much an introduction to Isla peated whiskeys and it tastes like it. If you want to up your game a bit, you know, there's a lot of other expressions. As I mentioned, a lot of people have been telling me I need to try the Loch Gorm, but that's going to be heavy sherry influence. So it's not really going to taste much like this. This is bourbon influenced for sure. But I would try to find the cask strength. I would either buy this one because $59 is not terrible for a scotch, but 
I I think my actual rating of this is probably going to be to try it. I think you will not be sad if you buy it, but I do think if you have the opportunity to just try this or get it at a bar, I mean, if you're the difference between $60 for a bottle and well, like 11 to try it at a bar, I mean, you're paying a sixth of the price to see if you like it. I, th I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, so that's my overall, but let's see what you guys thought. So out of 520 votes, which is a little lower than normal, but you know, I don't think a lot of people have had this. 9% said to stock it, 9% said to buy it, 14% said to try it, 5% said to ignore it, and 62% have never had it. Some comments from the audience. So we have Ron R says, I've tried it, even drank a bottle of it. Found it to be a bit ashy for my taste, but that's just me. Worth a try though. It does improve a bit after half a bottle and month or more on the shelf. Now, D-Man says, love Kilhoman, just had the cast strength of this one. Now, I'm with you. Like I said, I think the cast strength is probably where to go. And maybe I'll find that one on my shelf sooner than later. So, Andrea Hernandez says, one of my fave Isla scotches. Great bang for your buck and exquisite palate. I love the word exquisite. <laughs> now, lastly, Silver Lock Whiskey Reviews. I, I looked at his specifically because whiskey reviews, right? So their single cast strength expressions are way better than the core range. Lock Gorm is the only core range I would buy. And that seems to be in line with what I was hearing both from the Discord, which, by the way, join the Discord. But um, I heard a lot of people telling me to buy the, the Lock Gorm, so I think I'm going to have to. I do love sherried whiskeys. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. If you are interested in seeing a head-to-head -head between some of the peated whiskeys that you might like, go ahead and check out this video. If you want to see what YouTube thinks that you want to watch, check out this video instead. And say thank you to my patrons. They're the guys that are helping me to buy all these bottles. So feel free to join them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers.